Inglis gave his end of the year press conference. We haven't seen it yet, so let's watch it together. How's it going, guys? This is Pat. That's Ray. Welcome to JetCast. So, like I said in the intro, um, Joe Douglas gave his end-of-the-year press conference. Um, the season is officially over, even though it really ended week 17, but now it's over, over. There's no point in really talking about the game. It was a pillow fight, as, as uh, people were talking on, on, on Twitter. But, again, no point in talking about the game. So, um I have not seen the end of the year press conference. Really, you haven't either, right? No, I've been waiting all day long. I've heard some rumbling, so I'm excited oh, yeah. to get to it. All right, so let's watch it and let's give our uh, live uh, our live reactions to it. So, guys, thanks for being here. Um, obviously. I was hoping to have this conversation much later in January or February um, than having it right now. Um, obviously, um, it's been a, a surreal three and a half, four months. Um, you know, come, coming out of the gate the way we did, six and three. Um, you know, overcoming some of the obstacles early in training camp, the injuries. Uh, come off six and three, uh, having a huge win. Uh, at home against Buffalo, uh, you know, it was, uh, that was surreal and a positive. Okay, first off, he clearly has no interest in being at this podium right now. No, without a doubt, you could tell. It looks it, miserable. You know, it, it, it's in his voice. It, we we speak. We spoke about it. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago when our losing streak kind of started and kicked off, you felt that that change in Salah's voice. In, in the press conferences right away. He always talked about not getting too high and not getting too low. Yep. But it's weird. You almost feel that low point. You feel rock bottom, and it's almost like something's about – he's about to say something that he's not happy that he's going to have to say. Yeah. And then now on the flip side with how he finished the season, um, you know, uh, with this, with this uh, six-game losing streak, that's uh, – Real in the negative way. So, um, obviously, a lot of work to be done this off season. I know when I talked to you guys um, you know, in the past, you, uh, one of the things I said was it's going to be a good season if we were playing meaningful games in December. Well, uh, when you get to December at seven and four, um, that target changes, and so um, you know, we were we were fully expecting to be playing beyond beyond January and. Uh, and we weren't able to get that done, and uh, obviously a lot of things to to uh, go over. You know, we're gonna we're gonna begin our off season process now, uh, starting with well, I know I've said it before. One of the most important meetings we have is our end of season meeting with the with the coaching staff. So um, we're gonna we're gonna start that process this week. Um, you know, just just in regards uh, to Zach, you know, uh, I, I'm gonna echo Robert in a, in a lot of what he says and. You know, philosophically, you know, we've never been a team that's that's given up on on talent early, and uh, we all know the talent that Zach possesses. Um, so um, we're gonna do we're gonna do what we've done with every player, and that's that's work work with Zach, develop Zach, and uh, we're gonna do everything that we can to ultimately help Zach reach his full potential here. Does he have cue cards in his in his hands? Is he reading off something? I don't think so. It, it kind of look, looks like it with the body. Looking line. down on his hands. All right. Bill, how complicated is it with Zach? With where you still don't really know yet. You know, obviously you've seen the talent, but it hasn't worked out in two years now. Where you, you know, you're going into year three next year with you know with Robert's, you know, staff, and uh, you know, quietly or tacitly, players are probably somewhat of a mandate. And uh, so, how do you balance that? By putting all your potentially all your eggs in, in the Zach basket versus maybe bringing a veteran in, you know. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. new ride! We're cruising into the new year nice. in style with Marshall. Verizon Home Internet. Got it for just twenty-five bucks a month. No hidden fees. No surprise. You know, I, what's your thought on that? Yeah, you know, I think again, Mark, it starts with, with uh, our off-season starts with these with these meetings with the coaches. We're going to really. Uh, I think it's important for us to to go back and 
and have really tough, hard conversations about um, how, how we got to this point. You know, and, and I think, honestly, that started today. Um, you know, the last two weeks have, have been a little, little dark for me personally, but um, actually a little bit of light today, just, just talking with some of our players. And it started the today. Interviews, and you know, they're, they're obviously frustrated, but they're also uh, very optimistic about, uh, about a lot of the things that are going on here. But, you know, just on the quarterback, we, we've got a lot of work to do in terms of getting together, going over everything that, that got us to this point, and then moving forward, um, making sure we have the best plan, uh, not only for a certain position room, but for the entire organization. I'll say this. The fact that he said, you know, talking about the optimism, I don't know any player right now that could show any optimism towards this team that is currently on the roster. I understand the talent that we've drafted in this draft, the Sauce Gardners, the Garrett Wilson. Jermaine Johnson played his ass off the final week of the season. Garrett Wilson looks like an absolute stud. Michael Clemens was all over the field. Bryce Huff getting in the backfield. I understand that perspective, but to say that he can have conversations with the players and they see an optimistic view, we were just a clear-cut playoff team at the bye week and won one game. Seven out of our last eight. Come on, talk about optimism. The only, the only, the only two players that I saw in their interview that showed optimism were uh, Mackay Becton and uh, Brees Hall. <laughs> and then the other big thing was I think Quinnen was talking about if he doesn't get a contract, he's going to skip the voluntary workouts. That, that those were the three. Th- those those are the uh, the three that I saw. So I don't. Yeah, I don't know who he's talking to. Um, trying to convince himself, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I love Joe Douglas. I think he's a hell of a GM, but not yeah. starting off on a great foot with me. Let's go. Do you anticipate Zach Wilson being this team's starting quarterback to begin next year? Yeah. Look, I mean, one, um, mm. that determination isn't isn't by me. You know, I don't I'm, – that's, that's really a wrong Pause. question. Well, well but, no. Um, what, what's... Zach, you know, I had a great conversation with Zach. It's not today. up to him where he think, plays. Um, we, I know we're all committed to, to helping him it reach is, his though. full potential as a player. Um, but uh, you know, look, there's there's a lot of things that uh, we can do better to help him, and so we're gonna we're gonna He's get together just hold and, him a and, company and discuss line. all those things. You, Joe, Joe, you, can you tolerate? <clears throat> excuse me. Can you tolerate developing him on the field? Robert on the field Sala reports to him. That's, that's the exact that's structure that's in. He, he determines support, everything. Yeah. Yeah, but he's saying he's not the one that's choosing or whether or not he actually plays. He is. <clears throat> At the end of the day, Robert Sala know. reports to him, and he reports to Woody Johnson. Unless he's saying Woody's over his head saying the kid's got to play, which I highly, highly doubt that's happening because Woody's actually done a pretty good job of staying out of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I don't buy that at all, but – no, he's got. He's got to give Salah the autonomy to do what he feels is right as far as who needs to play. Yeah, I, guess, I don't know. You need to bring somebody else in. Look, I think again. I think we're going to look at the landscape of this overall off season. It's not just not just one position. Is it going to be twenty minutes? Um, of him saying yes, we are going to continue to develop Zach. Um, you know how how that quarterback room looks uh, next year. Um, look, we're just we're we're at the very infant stages of this of putting this off season plan together. But um, you know we're going to explore every single avenue that we have to to upgrade this team, upgrade this roster. When you so talk you about exploring every potential avenue to upgrade the roster, does that include potentially trading for a quarterback? Is that something that you are open to or something that you would consider? I mean, again, that's that's a hypothetical, I'd say. But um, I think, again, as it pertains to, to upgrading the roster, we're going to look at every avenue, every position, every different way we can to, to upgrade the team. So you had a belief, you had a belief in Zach, so you had a belief in Zach right, in April 21. Take him number two overall. You saw the, you know, things that you believed in. Has this organization not properly developed him to be sitting where we are right now? Look, I think there's things we we could have done better. Sure. Um, uh, he looks frustrating. But, you know, I think the, the the most important thing from our end is that we still believe in Zach. We know we know the the makeup that he brings, the character that he has, uh, everything he brings from a work ethic, competitive standpoint. And uh, we're going to do everything in our power to, to help. Replace the name Zach Wilson 
with Sam Darnold. They were saying the exact Back same shit. Saying. Exact same shit when Sala was uh when when uh when Joe Douglas was uh was brought on. Yeah, well they say the right now he's saying who wants to give me the, their second round pick? <laughs> you know, it's different, but we gotta remember there's a little bit different cap implications right now that we're gonna be dealing with that we weren't dealing with Darnold. We knew getting rid of Darnold it was kind of going to be a reset. This team's not ready for a reset. This team is ready right. to start winning. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just talking in terms of of what he's saying now, as opposed to what oh, he was yeah. saying back then. Yeah. You know, you can't, re- you can't read into anything that they're saying. Anything with Jamal Adams. One thing I'll Jamal give him: he runs a tight be... ship. He remember absolutely Jamal runs Adams? a tight ship. Jet for life. Remember that whole thing? <laughs> oh, Mr. Jamal. Yeah, remember that? How's it? Hey, his team's in the playoffs. <clears throat> the team that gave us two first-round picks, a third-round pick, and a starting safety. We give up our all-pro safety. He gets injured, our former quarterback, our former bust of the second-round picks in the playoffs. Can't wait to watch that Sunday. Go ahead, keep it going. Help support him. Joe, uh, your defense, obviously, is consistently one of the best in the league this season, but... Didn't score a touchdown the last three games or that six game losing streak. The offense wasn't really scoring much. I mean, how, how do you kind of process like the disparity there? I think it's pretty clear that the offense was maybe holding back what the defense was doing. Yeah, um, look, the. You can't you can't argue the the facts on um, not scoring uh, touchdowns the last three games. You know, it certainly wasn't a lack of effort. I feel like these guys, you know, they busted their their butt uh, every lack day in practice. Lack of an offensive coordinator. Um, and the and the defense, you know, the defense was a was obviously a championship caliber defense this year. And so, um, those are those are things that we'll, we're going to get together as a as a as a group, and uh, go over specifically where where we can get better. As a team and uh, as an offense, and specifically where we can where we can attack and upgrade different position groups. Joe, I have a two part on Zach. Um, Football wise, why did why just didn't it happen for him this year? I mean, what didn't happen? Just from a technical standpoint. Yeah. Football wise, why did he develop as you had hoped? Well, look, I think. Um, are you tired of smoking? Give Lucy Nicotine Gum a try. Very tired. I did, and I don't regret it one bit. You guys were here for the start of training camp. I think you guys saw um, that there was a lot of positives going on uh, w- with with the entire team. Um, and obviously, when when the injury happens in the first preseason game, that's that's obviously a setback, and you know you, you miss a lot of valuable reps um, with two teams coming in here. Well, excuse me, Atlanta came in here, and we went to the Giants, and. You know, those are those are really good opportunities to get reps against different defenses than your own. Um, so, look, I think I think there's a there's a lot of reasons. I think there's things we could have done better to, to help Zach, but uh, I think um, just the the consistency of uh, of of being you know available, especially at that early part, that critical early part of training camp. And uh, but still, he came back. You know, he, he brought us back from a ten point deficit at Pittsburgh. Um, you know, we that felt like we it went was on a little bit of a run ago. there, but um, yeah. we just we just couldn't get the right level of consistency as an entire offense. And my, just the second part of it is when um, when he got benched after the New England game, where were you on that? Were you in favor of that? Were, did you support that move? Yeah. So any time there's a decision like that, and, and Robert's so good about his communication and. You know, um, we bounced decision. different ideas off each I'll other. We, we, had, we had conversations. Um, ultimately, you know, uh, Robert made the decision to to uh, go with, go with Mike, um, and I supported I supported his decision. So part of your evaluation, obviously, going to be the guys coming back. You know, Brees uh, and, and ABT, particularly went down at the same time. And even Mackay, who looked in the locker room like he was in much better shape. What do you think this team looks like with those guys back? healthy next year when you kind of try to take that piece and look, look at what you have ahead. Yeah. And look, I think I think when I talked about cons- consistency and stability with the whole offense, I think you can t- you can go right there with the offensive line. I think you know, we come into training camp and nine you know, different be, combinations. Uh, nine and different Blake and Connor and A V T and Mackay and, 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 and that quickly changed, right? And so, um, that's why everyone's saying we got to draft offensive line. You know, He's got to be better. We're practice for four weeks, so there's change yeah. there. 
Um, Max comes in, does a great job yeah. filling in. You know, so I guess what my, my big point is, it was it was hard to find a level of consistency and stability within that group this year. And um, despite despite all of the all of the change up front, you know, um, I really felt like we were in a good place after that first Buffalo game. If you guys remember that fourth quarter drive, um, our last offensive drive, I think it was a six minute drive. We were running the ball really well. I'm sorry, that drive that was all the same run play was it three times in a row and it was one pass by Zach. Great drive, but you can't put you can't put that uh yeah. on. everybody I saw a lot of people on Twitter saying he's grasping oh, Zach, for straws, man. He's I know, but man. I mean I mean, he's not, he's not wrong. They played well. They played very well in that game. But like I said, it was nine different starting combinations across across the front, across the uh, offensive line. Felt like we had really gotten over the hump. <clears throat> uh, and, we were, and we were playing with a banged up unit um, with backups. And we felt like we were Back you know, we, practice we squad players. maybe gotten over that hump. Um, but street guys you know, again, there was, I'm sure he was ready to suit up at and, some point and, and, uh, less stability. So ultimately I think we, in an ideal scenario, you've got your starting five and all of them are playing together all year. Maybe that's not, uh, realistic, but, uh, that, that's going to be the goal. We went through forward, so much depth. Back five to guys that can Brown, play together all year. Man, and never have enough. Mitchell, Mitchell, you Aaron Tucker, now Remmer, basically two uh, years. This is this is a big this is a big off season for Mackay, yeah, and I think he out. understands yeah. that. And I think um, you know certainly our Perfect. offensive line is is, is missed his, miss, miss what he can do um, for the last two seasons. But uh, this is this is a, a big off season for him, and uh, obviously it's going to be important that he's uh, he's able to. Mackay looked good in his interview. And be in the best yeah. shape that he can Very slim, be. And he looks like he's motivated. Gonna, that's going to make for I hope so. a, a healthy. A healthy 2023 for him. I want to go three ties left tackle. I really do. Thinking about going solar, but no, not, not sure really. no, whether it's really. worth it for your home. No, well, before you. <laughs> I know it's a priority of yours, but is that something you want to get done like soon? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we all saw the year that Quinnen had. Um, and Quinnen, I mean, you can't say enough good things about not only the, the I'm not player, scared of paying Quinnen either, like um, I was Leonard Williams playing the run, any of rushing the passer, uh, the type general. of teammate and, and caliber person he is. You better fucking you know, pay so, him, Joe. Um, ultimately, <laughs> he will. We're, we're uh, he better. Quinnen's Quinnen's a big part of what we of, of, of our. Quinnen's got to give a little discount so, though. It's a um, fifth-year option. They have the franchise gonna, tag the following uh, year. Get together as a group. We're going to go over our plan. Um, I feel like we have a great football admin team, Dave Sosi, Nick Sabella. You know, we're going to get together and come up with a, a very good plan and then uh, move forward. But, you know, we're definitely going to do what's in the best the interest of, of the team worth holding and the organization. The organization. We have a lot of speculation, you know, obviously, at the end of the year like this uh, with, with Robert's staff and particularly because of the offense. No, let's get to the nitty-gritty. Enough of the bouncing around. If any, if what the hell's going on with the floor? On that, and is Woody involved in that? Yeah, I would say, like a previous question um, about the post New England game. Look, uh, Robert and I have a lot of a lot of great conversations, and so um, you know, Robert Robert has a thought or an idea, or if he if he has a question, or he, it, we we have great rapport and we're able to have great conversations about about everything. And uh, I feel like you know, Robert Robert has a really good bead on on this team and his staff. And uh, you know, I, I trust and support you know any decision that Robert makes, and uh, I, and I can tell you that you know, we've gotten full support um, from Woody this past. It's starting from you know since he's come back. I've heard that before. I think you saw that with the off season we were able to have last <laughs> year. Why is over the last shit show to, ten years to get players that that uh, could help us? Adam Gates so, got a full load uh, of confidence. I know we have that. support. Yeah. Just to clarify, I could though. Never forget that. that at the end of the day, it's you know you trust Robert's decision making on that. Absolutely. So it's his call ultimately. Then. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Joe, we, have, we haven't. I think we're going to get a chance to talk to Woody a little bit later on this week, but we, we haven't to this point. Interesting. Woody um, would have committed to talking right away. Days ago, that you know he isn't exactly thrilled with the way the season ended. What have your conversations with with Woody been like? Because um, you are someone who's yeah. talking a little bit more than us. Yeah, none of us are thrilled, obviously. Um, and, you know, I, uh, we all want to win. We're all highly competitive. Uh, no one wants to win more than more than Woody. 
um, more than the Johnson family. And so um, it, these conversations that we have are, are very productive. And uh, again, um, you know, he's, he's been very supportive about uh, um, giving us what we need to, to succeed. How would you assess the job Robert did, Joe? Man, I think we had a lot of we had a lot of curveballs thrown. Um, Robert does such a good job with with his staff um, and communicating with these players. Um, look, we're all devastated to be where we are right now, but um, I think I think Robert's final message to the team was was unbelievable today. You know, we're we have the same we're, we're going to be in this opportunity. Last, we're going to have these opportunities well, again moving forward, years. and uh, ultimately we have to finish. You know, we, we have to go out there. And, and Apparently they put uh, black T-shirts or black shirts or whatever in everybody's locker that said the word finish on it. Like they oh, yeah, said, I saw all the memes, all the Dolphin fans. Should have said adding, finished. Yeah, that's all the Dolphin fans are saying. I don't want to hear about the Dolphin. They're going to be one and done. They're going to get they're going to get they're going to get boat. Oh, uh, yeah, you can't wait in for a, that. A few days. <clears throat> can't wait for that. You beat us by three points. You think you're going to stand toe to toe with Buffalo, please. We'll get to that. And, and finish, finish games, finish the season. Uh, so we all need to take, we all need to take the next step um, individually and, and together as a group. But um, you know, I, I love Robert, and uh, I love the passion that he brings. Um, I love, I love. We share the same philosophy on what makes good teams good. And um, you know, there's, there's uh, no other teammate I'd rather be with. As you, look, as you look around the league now and the way the game is played, do, do teams need an elite quarterback to be elite? Or can you have a, a, a make up for those discrepancies? Obviously. Elsewhere on the roster? Yeah, I think obviously um, you've seen, you've seen, I think generally, generationally. Um, go look at every single playoff team. There's what, here maybe four or five quarterbacks quarterback uh, every generation that. That are really that, uh, that top-notch uh, player from the, you know, the, the Reno, Joe Montana, uh, Steve Young to the Aikman, Brett Favre uh, group to uh, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Now, now it seems like we're in a whole new generation. Um, you know, uh, as far as my experience in the league, um, you know, we it's a team sport and um, the ultimate team sport, and so. Quarterback is uh, the reason why the most important position in all sports. But ultimately, it's a team sport, and you have to have <laughs> you have to have a, a great group of people around them to support them. Joe, is, is it possible, in your in your opinion, for you know, we've seen young quarterbacks get drafted and sit and then play eventually? Is it possible to have a quarterback like the situation that might be presented to Zach, where? He played right away. Now he's going to sit for a little bit, and then he's going to go back out there with the same team, and then be a a, a starting quarterback in the NFL. Look, I, I think I think you've seen many different ways that um, quarterbacks, other players, have been able to overcome adversity. Um, Zach know, lost the locker room. That's late. the big difference. Um, yep, know, lost the fans all different too. Ways that, that people can come back. I think. Ultimately, it's like um, when Gino lost the locker room, you, got if you have the right box. kind of mental toughness and right perseverance, which I know Zach God. has, um, there's a lot of obstacles you can overcome. <clears> and uh, you know, I think we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can to to, to help Zach reach all of his goals. So, given what you just said about the quarterback position, it seems like if you guys have gotten better play just overall consistently out of that position, you might still be playing right now. So, how does obviously is that, uh, you know, given what you said when you were hired as well? Um, and, and how important is it to fix it quickly? I mean, obviously, you know, I, I would echo what what Robert said at the end of his talk today. Um, you, 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 consistency um, is is going to be the name of the game. No, you got to get the right guy. It doesn't in go here. just quarterback. The right I mean, guy goes every team. position group. But um, obviously, uh, we're all we're all hurting about where we are right now. Um, opposed to where we where we started the season, so um, again, it goes back. It really goes back to getting together, having tough conversations. How we got to this point, um, because only only if you really <clears throat> open up those wounds and, and talk about it can you can you really start the. They had multiple chances throughout this season to make the playoffs. Multiple chances. Two horrendous losses to New England. Yep. 
Um, losing to the Lions, and then have horrible everything, loss. Have everything break your way. Braxton Barrios drops the game-winning touchdown against Minnesota. I know. Um, <clears throat> it, but then you it, know what, Pat? We could also look at the other spec- side of the spectrum. Look at we had the, probably the best regular season win in franchise history, Week Two. Uh, oh no, sorry, Week Three against the Browns. No, it, was, was, it was week two. Was it week two? Yeah, you're right. It was week two. Against it, the Browns in that in that comeback. So, I mean, and that was led by Joe Flacco. At the end of the day, no team who plays four quarterbacks is ever going to win anything. And that's it's, what we're a, it's a shock. I, I can't believe Garrett Wilson had, a many, had as many yards as he did this year, given the circumstances. <sighs> It's I, think it's, I think it, we haven't had a quarterback in the last three years throw more than ten touchdowns. I would have to look that stat up, but I mean, we haven't had a quarterback man. since <clears throat> 2015 throw more than 20. Yeah, with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, and Garrett Wilson's the first thousand yard receiver, I believe, since that year too, when Eric Decker and Brandon Marshall both did it. Yep. Healing process and start to. Uh... Get better. Healing process. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify something you said on Quinn. You said you're going to come up with a plan. Healing you know, process. For, for um, yeah, just to just to uh, clarify that, not just for Quinn, and it's a, it's going to be an overall plan on, on kind of where we are. Um, yeah, but as it as it pertains to uh, our our salary cap situation, which we feel like we're, we're we still have a maintain a ton of flexibility. I guess what I was asking was because usually when yeah, we ask you about to about cut a bunch of fucking people. The contract, you usually say, well, you know, we love so and so, we want him here for a long time, or we jet for life. Yeah. You know what that I mean, not, yeah. I don't want to put words in. No, 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 no more jet for life con- comments <laughs> from me. But obviously, obviously, you know, Qu- Quinnen. You want you know, we we term, we, we all love Quinnen. You know, Quinnen's Quinnen's twenty five. He's uh, had a fantastic season, and so. You know, still think, uh, still think there's there's a lot of upside for him. So yeah, we 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 want Quinn in here. Assume he's coming back to. Um, <clears throat> it's they got to get a veteran quarterback. That that's really what it comes down to. And you gotta you have to get consistency on that offensive line. Those were the two. Those are the two things. Once once AVT went out. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like, and you're already down your starting left tackle. Yeah, I once. And then Mitchell goes down. Fan yeah. goes down. All these rotating parts. You got guys, Remmers, Herbig, Tomlinson's getting beat like a drum on the left side. I think he might have had an injury that we're gonna find about after the season because I find it very hard to believe. We just uh, found out Carl on the other side of the ball. We just found <clears> Carl. <throat> found, out, found out Carl Lawson had a second <laughs> surgery. We had no idea about. How is that not made available to the fans? And I I look at it like this. We could talk about you know the offensive line all we want. It came down to injuries. Joe Douglas brought in a ton of depth. Brown's going to be back next year if he doesn't retire. Mitchell's coming back. Mira Tucker's coming back. Now McGovern's interesting because he's going to be a free agent. If I'm the Jets, I'm interested in bringing him back, but I want to look to see if I can find something else because I feel he played very poorly, especially in that last game against the Dolphins. He was getting beat like a drum. I think it's more about... You know what we talked about earlier, the veteran quarterback. Uh, what quality of veteran are we going to bring in here? Are we talking the Derek Carrs and Garoppolo's of the world, or are we talking about the Gardner Minshew's of the world, Matt Ryan's of the world? You know, uh, I think LaFleur's going to get another crack at it because his system looked really well under Mike White for a couple of weeks, and yeah. Mike White's a career backup. So you bring in a guy maybe like a Derek Carr status, but how are you going to fit that under the cap? All these Jet fans want to pay Quinn and Williams, who's going to eat up a giant, a giant cap hit right off the bat. And people keep forgetting we borrowed money, cap money, for this year from next year. Lincoln Tomlinson's cap hit this year was like between five and six million. Next year it jumps to seventeen, and his dead cap hit's not something to just scoff at. You know yep. we had. They had to do it that way. They had to borrow money from next year, including 
guaranteeing pretty much Ola Mosley's contract in order to get that money to sign Brown in the, in the offseason once Mekhi Becton went down. So we're in a really interesting spot. If they want to make this work, they're going to probably have to cut guys like Jordan Whitehead, who I believe has got, you know, we brought in our cap expert last week, a, a sub-2 dead cap hit, but it saves them like $6 million. You're looking at uh, cutting guys like Braxton Barrios potentially. You know, there's a lot of guys. There's... It's, this could be an overhaul. They want to bring in a, a legitimate, back, uh, you know, veteran quarterback. Yeah, the roster is going to be very, very <clears throat> different, and it's and it and it all centers around Zach not being what they thought he was going to be because the whole team and all this all the salary structure is is centered around a, a, a guy on his rookie deal, and now they realize that the talent is there around him. Um, around the quarterback position, and, and they need they need a veteran there to to uh, uh, you know get us to to the next step. So I'm I don't know. It's going to be very interesting going forward what they're going to do. But like I said, this this press conference um, it was a whole lot of nothing, to be yep. honest with you. Um, yeah. So uh, I think we should start maybe in our next videos doing some. Um, Doing some mock drafts. We definitely get into free agency. We'll get see. You know what's up? Yeah, we could break maybe break down the playoffs. I would love to have some of uh, a guest or two on. Uh, you know, I don't want to re- reveal who they are, but we'll see going forward. Yeah, maybe we'll do a video in a week or so after the first uh, wild card round, and we'll uh, we'll laugh at all the Dolphin fans. <laughs> all right. All right, so uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, if you've uh, if you're new here, please subscribe. If you've been here before, thanks for hanging out.